Do you get stressed at the idea of clipping your dog's nails? And more importantly, does your dog get stressed at the process? In this video, instructor Shannon and her toller named Ned are going to give you the complete guide of how to clip your dog's nails. It's going to include how to make them comfortable with the process so that you're more comfortable and so are they. I'm Ken Steep, this is instructor Shannon, and this is Ned. And welcome back to McCann Dogs. Nail trimming is something that every dog will have to go through. It's something that's very important for their overall foot health and of course that means their overall health in general. We are going to talk today about some of the ins and outs of how to get your dog used to nail trimming, how to make sure that they're nice and comfortable with it, and how to do it properly so that you're not accidentally cutting into that quick. It is so important that your dog is used to the process of having their nails trimmed. Even if you yourself don't want to do the work, if you want to have your vet or your groomer do it, that's fine, but your dog will have to be used to and comfortable with the process. So we want to make sure that even if we do have somebody else do it, our dog has spent a lot of time with us, being interacted with, with handling, with those clippers, and getting comfortable with the whole idea of that. Now there are two main styles of clippers that you will come across. In addition to nail clippers, you could also use a Dremel. We're not going to get into that in this video, but it is a, it is a way of trimming nails that a lot of people do like. Now with the two main styles of nail trimmers you've got what we call the scissor style and what we call the guillotine style. Now the scissor style of clippers is pretty straightforward. They're, they're a little bit more versatile. You can actually cut your dog's nails in any direction. So if you find that uh, sometimes you have a hard time with the precision aspect of nail trimming you might find that the scissor type of, of trimmers are a better one to work with than the guillotine which you have to hold and move a little bit more specifically and we'll get to that in a moment. Now with the scissor style of clippers, the only thing that I really like to mention is that they often will have a guide on them from the manufacturer and we don't want you to use that guide. It certainly will prevent you from cutting off your dog's entire nail, but we want you to trim your dog's nails more frequently than not, which means that hopefully the quick will be nice and short. The more often you trim your dog's toenails, the more that quick will recede and the healthier and shorter you can get those toenails. If I use that guide and put my dog's toenails nail in all the way to that guide, I would end up cutting way too much of his toenail off. I would actually end up cutting into the quick without question. So we do recommend that you get rid of that guide and use your touch, use your feel, and use your eyesight and your history of cutting nails as well to determine how much of that nail you're going to cut off. Now with the guillotine style of clippers, there's actually a right and a wrong way to hold this. Now if I hold this with the moving edge in my palm and I line up my dog's toe toenail, when I go to cut, you can see how much that head moves and I'm going to end up taking off a different amount than what I had planned. So it's very important with these that you hold the non-moving edge, that's the moving edge, this is the non-moving edge, hold that non-moving edge in your palm and that way when you go to squeeze you can see it's just the blade that moves up. I'm not getting a lot of play to the head and I can end up cutting exactly what I had intended to cut off of that toenail. One of the most important points that we want to make in this video today is how important it is to work with your dog with handling techniques, both with and without the clippers to get them comfortable with nail trimming. So with Ned here, Ned just turned two recently, so he has had his nails trimmed just about every week of his life since he came home to live with me at nine weeks of age. So he's pretty accustomed to this at this point. But the initial, I would say, month or two that he was home, I did a little bit of nail trimming practice every single day to make sure that he got really accustomed and really used to me handling him both with and without those clippers. Now I wasn't necessarily trimming toenails every single time I worked with him but I was making sure that he was comfortable being still, being around those clippers, being touched with and having pressure put on his nails so that I could eventually get to the point where he would sit stock still as I put that nail in the clipper and there wasn't going to be any movement before I actually took that little piece of nail off. The last thing I want to do is accidentally cut off too much of the nail. There is a blood vessel inside of the nail and it's called the quick and if you cut into it it will bleed and it can be um 
for lack of a better word, I would say it can be dramatic. It's not something that your dog is going to bleed to death over. It's not as terrifying as it seems, but it does bleed a lot and it can be very alarming. It does sting to the dog as well. It would sort of be like cutting off a little bit too much of your own nail. So it is a little bit painful. It's something that you want to avoid. So the goal with handling is always to keep our dogs in that state of mind where they're nice and calm and they're able to just sit and be still while you do what you need to do. All I'm going to do with my dog when he's a young dog and he's just getting used to things is I'm going to get him used to the idea of me touching. So I might pick up a paw. Yes. I'm going to say yes while I'm holding that paw and then I'm going to deliver a cookie to him. So as long as the timing of my yes happens while I'm touching what I'm touching, my dog is going to start to associate that with the good rewards that are coming. So again with that paw, good boy. Yes. I'll say yes and then get my cookie out to reward. If you've got a baby puppy that you're starting this with, you might actually start with the food right on your dog's nose and then pick up the paw, yes, and reward from there. So that they're a little bit distracted by the food and they start to get the idea that you touching their paw is nothing they need to worry about and it's also a really good thing. As time goes on, you can get to the point where you're simply picking up that paw, yes, good job and then rewarding your dog. Now, while I'm holding the paw and handling, I wanna make sure that I can separate the toes a little bit. Yes. And then reinforce my dog for that. So I'm gonna do a lot of work with this handling, moving the toes around, keeping it nice and short initially, but eventually building to the point where I can hold his foot for as long as I want without him having any sort of problem with it. What a good dog you are, buddy. Yes. As long as, again, I say yes as I'm holding and then deliver my treat. Now what I'm going to do is some similar things but with the clippers as well. And just so that you stay nice and calm in the process as well and don't get anxious, if you are a little anxious about the nail trimming process, close the clippers so that you're not going to do any harm. I'm going to pick up my dog's foot and I might just give it a little touch. Yes, good job buddy. And you could see there he's looking at his foot and then he starts looking up at me because he's waiting for me to say yes and then get that cookie out. He's learned that this situation means he gets lots of rewards and it's a wonderful thing. Nothing at all that he needs to worry about. Now, if you have a dog that is a little bit sensitive about having their feet handled, you'll need to take slower steps with this. And every dog is unique. They're all individuals and they're all gonna progress at different rates. So don't feel like you need to keep up with a certain standard you simply need to make progress. And I always recommend that people keep a journal of their thoughts as they're working through any particular problem so that you can jot down little bits of information about how things went yesterday, what your plan is for today. And then two weeks from now, if you start to run into a problem, you can look back in your journal entries and you can see how you worked through some things. You'll, you'll get lots of tips that'll help you out in your own training scenario. If your dog is really sensitive about those feet being handled, take baby steps. So I might just run my hand down this foot and not expect anything. Yes, good job. I also might work on something like a shake a paw or a high five to have an extra little way of teaching my dog your paw. Yes, that them allowing me to handle their feet is a great, great thing. If you're needing to take little baby steps on handling, it might take you two or three training sessions just to get to the point where you can lightly put a little bit, uh, good boy, a little bit less pressure on the foot sitting on the ground. I know you're very cute. Can you put that down for a second? That a boy. So you might just hold it in position there just with a little bit of rubbing or pressure, eventually get to the point where you can maybe lift it a touch and you can yes and reinforce each of these tiny little baby steps to help your dog get to the point where they're really, really comfortable. Now, once you're ready to actually cut toenails, a couple of things, uh, inventory items, if you will, that you'll need to make note of first. Does your dog have dew claws? Some dogs will have dew claws on their front foot, and on the front feet, pardon me, and some dogs will also have dew claws on the rear feet and with all of their toenails if you take your dog for walks on sidewalks etc a lot they will grind down those nails a little bit you still will probably have to thank you buddy you still will probably have to cut your dog's toenails frequently but that um, dew claw will never ever make contact with the sidewalk or the pavement so you will have to make sure that you get to that one frequently and like I said if they have rear dew claws as well now Ned does have front dew claws he doesn't have rear but the dew claw is basically just like a little thumb it's not opposable but a little thumb upwards on that the dog's leg there 
And that nail, like I said, will never touch the ground. It's always going to be up away from the ground, so it's never going to get ground down at all. So be very, very aware. If your dogs have dew claws, you want to make sure that you cut them and pay attention to them frequently. If they're left unattended, the nail can actually grow so long that it comes and turns and, and grows right back into the foot. Of course, very dangerous for the dog. So be very aware of those dew claws. Now, I like to use the scissor style of clippers. It's simply a matter of preference, but uh, it's totally up to you which you prefer to cut with. Either way, what you want to be able to do is cut off small amounts of the nail more frequently rather than cutting off a whole bunch of the nail maybe once or once every month or two. So once a week or so, good boy, you are going to work on just taking on and shaving off little bits of the nail. So what I'm going to do is insert my dog's toenail into the clipper. I'm going to make sure he's nice and calm and still. He's not struggling or panicking in that moment. If all is good, I'm simply going to snip and take off a tiny little bit. The piece that I just took off was maybe about a millimeter or so. Then I'm going to move over to the side of the nail and take off another tiny little touch. The inside of the nail, another little touch. And then I'm going to take a slight diagonal amount of nail off of the top of that as well. And that just cuts the nail around the quick and it enables the nail to reseal as it grows. And that quick will start to recede a little bit as time goes on. Now, as we mentioned, there is a blood vessel in that nail that will bleed if you cut into it. And that's, of course, something that you want to avoid. Um, if you do happen to cut into that nail, there's all sorts of styptic powders on the market that you can get. There's silver nitrate sticks that'll stop that from bleeding in a hurry. If you're um, in a pinch and you don't have any of those things on hand, a cold compress will help. Um, if it's winter, you can throw the dog out in the backyard and let them wander around in the snow. Uh, it might look a little bit uh, like a massacre out there, but but it will help to slow the bleeding. And you also want to, as much as possible, if you happen to cut into that quick, try to keep your dog calm. Because of course, if the heart is not over pumping, then the blood flow will be slower and it'll help to dry that up. So a couple of tips there to help if you do happen to make a mistake and cut into the quick. Now, remember, if you are working with a young dog who's fairly new to nail trimming, you need to be really conscious of how much you are rewarding the process. We want the dog to have an absolute positive association with the whole idea of nail trimming and be totally calm and relaxed about it and even actually look forward to the interaction. So do make sure that as you're working through, as I mentioned, when Ned was a puppy, the first two months he was home, I probably did nail trimming work every single day. And I rarely did more than one or two nails at a time when I actually did get into trimming nails. What I wanted to do was make sure that my dog understood and was comfortable with the process, but I wanted to keep the pressure as a nice short interval. So I would do some handling work, lots of really high value rewards. I would maybe trim a toenail. And of course, remember when you're trimming those toenails, it's not just one cut. You want to take a little bit off the front, off of each side, and then a little bit off of the top as well on that nail. So you don't want to have your dog when they're new and young and uh, having a hard time potentially with this situation. You don't want them want to have them in the situation for so long that they start to get stressed, that they get worse stressed, that they start to completely panic. And it's a downward spiral, of course. So keep it nice and short. Get in lots of good rewards. Of course, you can taper off the rewards as your dog grows and as the positive association is made with this exercise. But we want to make sure that it is a wonderful experience for the dogs. I want to thank instructor Shannon and Ned for joining us today and I hope you feel prepared to clip your dog's nails. Now if you're looking for more handling training click that card right there and if this is your first time on the channel make sure you hit that subscribe button. We publish new videos every single week to help you to have a well-behaved four-legged family member. On that note I'm Ken. I'm Shannon. Happy training. <laughs>